فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد When the explanation of the kitab ثلاثة الأصول written by شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى We have taken seven types of anwa'u al-ibadah and today inshallah ta'ala we're going to take the eighth one sahih we're going to take the eighth type and naw'u thamin min anwa'u al-ibadah which is al-khashiyah qala al-musannifu rahimahullah the author said muhammad ibn abdul wahab rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'ah wa dalilu al-khashiyati qawluhu ta'ala fala takhshawhum wakhshawni what does the word al khashya mean? So this ayah Allah says, فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ Don't have khashya of them. وَخْشَوْنِي But have khashya of me. What does al khashya mean? The word al khashya is مَزْدَرُ khashya. It's from the verb noun khashya. Now. As an imam al raghib الأصفهاني أما الأصبهاني said in his book المفردات he says الخشية هي خوف يشوبه تعظيم وأكثر ما يكون ذلك عن علم بما يخشى منه ولذلك خص العلماء بها في قوله تعالى إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء وقوله سبحانه من خشي الرحمن بالغيب أي لمن خاف خوفا اقتضاه معرفته بذلك من نفسه الإمام الراغب الأصبهاني رحمه الله says الخشية means هي خوف it is a fear يشوبه تعظيم mixed with Honoring. And the majority of the times it is based on knowledge. The thing which you're having the khashya of. You have knowledge of it. You have understanding of it. And because of that, the scholars were specified with khashya. Specifically, it was given to them. That's why Allah says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ The only people who have khashya of Allah are the scholars. وَقَوْلِهِ سُبْحَانَهِ And also the statement of Allah, مَنْ خَشْيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ The ones who fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala بِالْغَيْبِ In the unseen. And then he explains that he says, "A liman khafa the one who fears him, khawfan a fear iqtaba who that necessitates ma'arifatu bidalik and knowing him for it, min nafsi from himself." In other words, it is fear that is associated with knowledge and honoring. So that's where the difference between al khawf wal khashya is. And as we're going to see later. The statement of Al-Fayruza Abadi, Rahimahullah, in his Basairu Dawi Tamiz, he mentions that the khawf is li'amati al-mu'mineen, it's for the all general mass, the Muslims, everyone. Khawf is, is established for every believer. As for khashya, it's for the ulama al-arifin, the scholars who know Allah wa ta'ala. Now we've understood what it means linguistically. And technically that's what it is. 
لذلك that's why sometimes as it said وقد تستعمل مجازا في معنى العلمي sometimes even the Arab poets they actually use the word khashya as knowledge they actually use it <coughs> instead of knowledge they say khashya as the poet said وَلَقَدْ خَشِيْتُ بِأَنَّ مَنِ اتَّبَعَ الْهُدَى سَكَنَ الْجِنَانَ مَعَ النَّبِيِّ مُحَمَّدِ وَلَقَدْ خَشِيْتُ is وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُ So this is majaz when they when the Arabs are using it, they say it from that angle. And as I said to you, what's the farq between al khawf and al khashya? What's the difference between al khawf and al khashya? Fayruz Abadi says al khashya to akhsu min al khawf is more specific. Khashya is a very it's a part of al khawf, but a narrowed down meaning of al khawf. فإن الخشية للعلماء بالله تعالى because خشية is is a fear that's specific to the scholars. فيخوف مقرون بمعرفة it is a fear that accompanies it معرفة knowing. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم because the prophet said إني أتقاكم إني أتقاكم إني أتقاكم الله وأشدكم له وأشدكم له خشية. The Prophet الله عليه وسلم said, I am the most conscious one of Allah تبارك وتعالى. I am the one who knows Allah the most. سبحانه وتعالى. And I am the one who fears Him the most. But what he used here is what? That I am what? I have more piety of Allah and I am the one who has the most khashya. The reason is because the Prophet's knowledge of Allah is the greatest knowledge. There's no one who has more knowledge than him, alayhi salatu salam of Allah. And that's the hadith in Sahihain, in hadith Anas ibn Malik, where the Prophet said, Wallahi inni la akhshakum lillahi wa atqaakum lahu. So we now have also learnt um, the difference between al khashya and wal khawf. And we also learnt what al khashya lughatan means and istilahan. Allah wa ta'ala, He commanded the believers to come with khashya. And He forbid, he forbid them to have khashya an ahadin siwahu from anyone other than Him. فقال جل في علاه, Allah says, as the author brought the ayah, فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِي Don't have fear of them but fear me. Also Allah says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 44, فَلَا تَخْشَوُ النَّاسَ وَخْشَوْنِي Don't have fear of the people but rather fear me. Rather fear me. ولذلك حافظ ابن حد... حافظ ابن كثير رحمه الله حافظ ابن كثير رحمه الله The ayah that the author brought which is فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِي Don't fear them, but fear me. When Ibn Kathir commented on it, he said, A, it means, أَفْرِدُ الْخَشْيَةَ لِي Sorry, single. Single, fear for me. فَإِنَّهُ تَعَالَى هُوَ أَهْلُ Because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is the one and يُخْشَى مِنْهُ He is the only one who deserves to be feared. وَقَالَ السَّعْدِيُّ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ Abd al-Rahman ibn Nasir al-Sa'di, he says in his kitab, Taysir al-Kareem al-Rahman fi tafsiri kalam al-Mannan. He says, Amar Allah ta'ala bi khashyatihi. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala commanded for him to be feared. Alati hiya ra'su kulli khayrin. Because it's the head of every good there is. Faman lam yakhsha Allah. Anyone who doesn't fear Allah. then he will not stay away from sins. And he will not also be able to come with what Allah wa ta'ala commanded him to come with.
and it is truly the people of Khashiyah, the ones who benefit from reminders. If you see an individual who benefits from the reminders, when they are reminded of Allah wa Taala, then you're going to know they are the people of Khashiyah. As Allah says in Surah Al-A'la, فَذَكِّرْ Remind. إِنَّ فَعَاتِ الذِّكْرَى سَيَذَّكَّرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى Remind. For verily the reminder will benefit the one who has khashya. So no one else truly benefits from the dhikra, the reminders that you give. Except a person who what? Man khashya rahmana bil ghayb. The one who has khashya of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Even from the jamadat, the rocks, the pebbles, the mountains, from amongst them there are those who have khashya. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَحْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ from, among, from amongst them there are those who what? Those of them which have khashya in them. Look at the Qur'an when it comes down on a mountain, as Allah tells us, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خاشعاً متصدعاً من خشية الله. If this Quran was to be sent down on a mountain, you would you would have seen the mountain tremble. For what? Like in for what? For what reason? من خشية الله. Because it has the خشية of Allah سبحانه وتعالى in it. That mountain. If you just observe yourself and you look at yourself as an individual, that is enough for you to realize the greatness of Allah wa Taala, and that He is the in, He's the one who deserves to be feared. Khashya should be brought for Him, and that's what Allah says to you: anfusikum afala Do you not just look at yourself, observe yourself, how you're constructed and how you're put together? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said about the people of Iman Allah is pleased with them They are pleased with Allah and Allah is pleased with them And that is لِمَنْ خَشْيَ رَبَّهُ Surah Al-Bayyina, right? The people of Khashya are the ones who are going to find success and forgiveness And it's for them who Allah Taala prepared Jannah to Firdaus, as He said, Subhanahu wa Taala, وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَخْشَ وَيَخْشَ اللَّهَ وَيَتَّقِهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ The ones who obey Allah and His Messenger, and they come with the khashya of Allah, and they are conscious of Allah Taala's commands and His prohibitions. فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ Verily, they are the ones who are successful. Also Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala he says إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ Those who have khashya of their Lord بالغيب Privately Allah said لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ They have forgiveness from their Lord وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ And they have vast and a lot of reward وقال تعالى Allah also says مَنْ خَشْيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ the one who has fear of Allah Taala, bil ghayb, privately, wajaa bi qalbi munib, and he comes with a heart that turns to Allah Taala, it will be set him the day of judgment. Udhuluha bi salam, dalika yom al khulud, lahum ma yashauna fiha wa ladayna mazid. They will be told to enter Jannah, and that they're going to stay there forever. And Allah says to them. لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا For them is everything which they want. وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ And we have extras for them. So I say to you, my brothers, أَرَعَيْتَ مَكَانَةَ الْخَشَّةُ وَقَدْ رَحَى 
Can you not see the status and the position of the people of Al Khashya? This is a great Wallahi station. And it is Ubudiyah Jalila. It's a great level of servitude. <coughs> Rather, what is the highest level in a person's religion? What's the highest level a person can gain in their religion? Based on the hadith of Jibreel. Ihsan, yeah, right? That's the highest station. The person is a Muslim, then he goes station up, becomes a mu'min. He goes station up, then he becomes a muhsin, right? And this is a'la maratib ad deen right? Based on the hadith of Jibreel, right? What, what the Prophet ﷺ told us in the hadith sahihain, the, the hadith, when it, by the way, Imam Muslim, he narrated it from what? An Imam Muslim. Who did he narrate it from? Umar radiallahu anhu, right? Bukhari didn't. Imam al-Bukhari did not narrate it from Umar. Imam al-Bukhari narrated it, but he narrated it from who? Abu Hurairah. Different wordings. Also, Muslim did narrate it from Abu Hurairah. So the Muslim has the narration of Umar, and he also has the narration of Abu Hurairah. Are you there? And Kitab al-Iman is Sahih Muslim. What's the first hadith? He starts with hadith of Jibreel, like in from the riwayah of who? The riwayah of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, right? Umar ibn al-Khattab. He mentions the story of Yahya ibn Ya'mar and Humayd ibn Abdullah Abdul Rahman al-Himyari. When they go together, they go, we go hajjina or mu'tamirayn. We either go, we went hajj or umrah together. And then they said to each other, لو لقينا أحد من أصحاب رسول الله If only we were to meet one of the companions of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we can tell them about these deviated people who have come out from amongst us. Who are they referring to? The Qadariyah. And Abdullah ibn Umar when he was told. And they said to him, uh, from amongst us are people يقرؤون القرآن They read the Quran ويتقفرون العلم ويزعمون ألا قدر They claim that there is no قدر Abdullah ibn Umar straight away did he say فأخبرهم أني بريء منهم وأنهم براء مني Tell them I am free from them and they are free from me straight away And then he added on to it something else what did he say and also to them, tell them. فأخبرهم أني بريء منهم وأنهم براء مني ولو أنفق أحدهم مثل أحد ذهب ما قبل الله منهم حتى يؤمن بالقدر. That if one of them was to give the mountain of Uhud in gold, Allah won't accept it from them. حتى until they believe in the, حتى يؤمن بالقدر. Until they believe in the قدر. And then he says, my father told me. And then he mentions the hadith of Umar radiallahu anhu. Sahih? That's the story of hadith of Umar, uh, Abdul, uh, and Umar, uh, Umar radiallahu anhu, based on the one Sahih, Imam Muslim brings in his Sahih. And that's the one and Imam Nawi brings in his 40 hadith. And Ibn, Abd, Ibn, Ibn Rajab al-Hambari in Jami Ulum al-Hikam. But there's also another narration of Abu Huraira. Are you there? The hadith is very long, right? The part when the Prophet is asked about Ihsan, the narration of Abu Huraira, which you find in Muslim as well, because Muslim did bring Abu Huraira's version as well. And Bukhari didn't bring Muslim's, uh, uh, Umar's version, but he brought Abu Huraira's version. The wording is, The Prophet was asked about Ihsan. He's, who's asking? Jibreel. The Prophet responded in a different way, wording, which is what? And takhshallaha. Before the other Umar radiallahu anhu was what? An ta'bud Allah, sah? Here it says, An takhshallaha ka'annaka tarahu. Fa illa fa innaka illa takun tarahu fa innahu yaraka. Are you there? Which is an taqshallaha that you are conscious and you're fearful of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala khashya which is ma'ahu ta'zeem a khashya which has in it what? ilm ka'annaka tarahu like you can see him and if you can't see him alhamdulillah alhamdulillah yadikum Allah yislahab alam yeah 
and تخشى الله كأنك تراه as you can see him. If you can't see him, then Allah تبارك وتعالى he can he can see you. So here we've learned a benefit which is إحسان is خشية. Are you there? And والله our messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام he showed us a great example. The great, a great example. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم he gave what? ضرب أعلى المثل. And that is, and this is in showing you في شدة التحري في باب الحلال والحرام. And the reason why he did it عليه الصلاة والسلام was what خشية من الكبير المتعال. He صلى الله عليه وسلم had خشية of Allah تبارك وتعالى. Al Imam Al Bukhari and Muslim both of them narrated. من حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال that the Prophet said إني لا أنقلب إلى أهلي فأجد تمرة ساقطة على فراشي ثم أرفعها لأكلها ثم أخشى أن تكون صدقة فألقيها. The Prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم I go to my family, I go home, I go to my house, and then I find a date on my bed. And then I, I lift it up. I mean, I take it from where it is to put it in my mouth to eat it. Then he said, I get scared that it could probably be a sadaqah. And then I, get, I, I don't do it. I don't eat it. And as you know, the Prophet ﷺ, sadaqah is what? It's haram from him. He's not allowed to have it. It's haram. It's what? It's haram from him. Alayhi salatu wasalam. But look at where it is, Akhi. Billahi alayk, look where it is. It's in his own house. It's in his own room. It's in his, in his bed. Yeah? Ma'a dhalika, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he have? He had khashya. He had what? He had khashya alayhi salatu sallam, and he was scared. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she narrated and this hadith is found in Sahih Muslim and a rajulan jaa ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yastaftihi a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking him a question wa yatasma'u Aisha was listening min warai al-babi from behind the door The man said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, tudrikni salatu wa ana junubun. Salah reaches me. Are you there? And I'm in a state of janaba. Afa'asumu, shall I fast? Faqala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Wa ana tudrikni salatu salak reaches me وأنا جوب جنوب are you there فأصوم and I fast فقال the man said لست مثلنا you're not like us our messenger of Allah يا رسول الله قد غفر الله لك الله has forgiven you ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر and then the prophet responded and said to him والله إني لا أرجو أن أكون أخشاكم لله وأعلمكم بما أتقاه I hope to be from those who have the most khashiyah from Allah wa ta'ala and who has most knowledge of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us the hadith and Imam al-Tirbidhi narrated in his sunan or also you can call it his jami' and also Tirmidhi said هذا حديث حسن and also other scholars the muhaqqiq the scholars of tahqiq who stood over Tirmidhi's sunan such as Sheikh Nasir al-Din al-Albani and others they said hadith sahih bi shawahidi this hadith is sahih with his shawahid من حديث ابن عباس 
رضي الله تعالى عنهما. He said, I heard the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say, عينان لا تمسهم النار. Two eyes, the hellfire will never touch. عين بكت من خشية الله. An eye that cried and watered من خشية الله. Fear of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. وعين باتت تحرس في سبيل الله. And an eye that spent the whole night safeguarding for the sake of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, protecting the Muslim land, border controlling. And also the hadith of Tirmidhi, which is also found in Nasa'i and Ibn Majah, in hadith Abi Hurairah, the Prophet said in a, a different wording, he says, لا يلج النار رجل بكى من خشية الله حتى يعود اللبن في الضرع ولا يجتمع غبار في سبيل الله ودخان جهنم. The Prophet said, said عليه الصلاة والسلام, that the hellfire will not eat a man who cried for the sake of Allah until the milk goes back to the breast of the animal. Is that possible? Are you there? This, my beloved brothers and sisters, is known as what? This is powerful. This is not just negation. This is called in the Arabic language when you look at when you look at the Arabs and the way they speak like this. This is called it is not sabilu it's not nafi. It is imtina. Ala sabil al imtina. Lian al imtina ablahu min mutlaq al nafi. The qaida is what? الامتناع أبلغ من مطلق النفي صح؟ What does امتناع mean? It means impossible صح؟ It's what? It's impossible It's like when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said نحن أحق بالشك من إبراهيم Remember? Like when Ibrahim says, قَالَ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى قَالَ أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ قَالَ بَلَى وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِي Ibrahim, did you not believe? Why are you asking to see the, how Allah brings life to the dead? Do you not believe? Ibrahim says, قَالَ بَلَى I do. وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِي So I can find. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? نَحْنُ We are أَحَقُّ بِالشَّكِّ مِنْ Ibrahim. We are more befitting to have doubt than Ibrahim. This doesn't mean that the Prophet ﷺ has shak, nor does it mean Ibrahim has shak. Rather, what it means is that since Nabiullah Ibrahim, are you there? Ask this question, sorry, since you all know that I, Muhammad, do not doubt Allah wa Taala and his ability, which is you guys believe as Muslims, is that it's impossible, the same way it's impossible for Nabi Ibrahim. That's what he means. Are you there? Well, that like negating something doesn't necessarily mean imtina. Are you there? If for example, I I say now, uh, Fatullah did not come. Does that make sense? Did I negate his coming? I negate the fact that he's not coming right now. صح? But does that show that imtina is impossible for him to come? It's still possible for him to come. You see, so the imtina is the strongest, and this is how powerful that this hadith shows. Which is, which is what? لا يلج النار رجل بكى من خشية الله. Because the previous narration, what did it say? The other previous just said عينان لا تمسهم النار. Just negated that the hellfire would touch them. صح. But this one's more powerful. حتى يعود اللبن في الضرع. Is it possible for a milk to go back in the milk at breast of where it came out from? It can probably by as time goes on and you know technology comes, they might be able to inject the milk inside the animal again. But can they place it from where it came out from the ch impossible? So this gives the believer what? It gives the believer understanding and knowledge. Are you there? 
he sees that if he cries for the sake of Allah, that that person would what gain that station of not not being placed in the hellfire. Also, an Imam Ibn Majah narrated and the isnad of this hadith is Sahih Rijaluhu Thiqat as it's in the kitab Mujma'u Zawaid wa Mamba'u Fawaid. In the hadith of Abi Sa'id al Khudri, رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, said, لا يحقر أحدكم نفسه, one of you should not belittle himself. Are you there? One of you should not belittle himself. قالوا يا رسول الله كيف يحقر أحدنا نفسه? How can one of us belittle himself? قال the Prophet said, يرى أمر الله he sees Allah's command, فيه مقال. He sees a religious matter that requires a statement on your behalf. You see an Islamic issue at hand, particularly in a gathering or a sitting or somewhere. And you see what? That you, sh- you, that you need to speak now. That you need to say something. ثُمَّ لَا يَقُولُ فِي But that you choose not to. فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ اللَّهُ will say لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The day of judgment will say to him مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَقُولَ فِيَّ كَذَا وَكَذَا Allah will say to him Why did you say my affairs that day This, this, this فَيَقُولُ The person will say خَشْيَةُ النَّاسِ I did it because I was scared of the people فَيَقُولُ Allah then will say to him فَإِيَّا كُنْتَ أَحَقُّ أَن تَخْشَى It was me alone Are you there? It was me alone that you should have been scared of so this brings us back to what the author, the ayah that the author used, which is, "Fala taqshouhum waqshouni." A lot of the people today, when they see something wrong, what are, what is the thing that they say? Akhi the people. They observe what the people say, and their concern is what the people might think and what the people are. So inshallah ta'ala I will stop there bi idnillah al kareem Anything which I have said that was wrong mistake a shortcoming is from me as shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu